Hello and welcome back to my 2D Left 4 Dead thing in Unity tutorial. Uh, today we are doing the UI because a very nice man on Reddit said that something along the lines of I feel sorry for what people who are watching this because they'll be horrible coders for life or something. So let's do something that's not particularly code intensive and hope for the best. So as you can see we now have some UI so if I just pick up these objects here we'll see that we can scroll through our well, my horribly drawn icons to indicate what kind of weapon we're on. So we've got, we got the Uzi, and they've got the ammo counter, we've got the pistol, it's ammo counter, shoot and that goes down, shoot and that goes down. Same time, we've got a health kit, so it's like that. Or pain pills and then health kit. Then we can like hold right click and it will use first aid and it'll have the progress bar. And as soon as we finish it, it'll get used and then the icon disappears because we don't have any more. And that white square is where we'll have the throwable icon as when we get around to implementing them. Um, similarly to the uh, progress bar, we have a, like a health bar at the bottom there. Uh, if we just change Zoe's health at the moment, uh, where's health value? So if we say set to 55, we'll see that the, it decreases and it'll sort of just uh, be proportional to actually how much health the uh, player has. So let's get on and have a look at how we did all this shit, shall we? Okay, so let's have a look at the uh, health bar first. So I think the easiest thing to display, uh, if I can find it, person you are here. Uh, so basically, in Left 4 Dead, you'll have uh, four uh, of these like type things. So you'll have a little face of the NPC or the like player's Steam icon, which is not actually that hard to do. You can uh, use the some Steamworks thing that I forget the name of to like get the uh, player's avatar. But that's off topic. Uh, yeah. So first off, we've got this script called Person UI, which has a player health variable, which is just the player to display. It's got a health bar, an image that's just the that represents the health bar. So that basically uh, decreases and increases in width to uh, to basically represent the player's health. Uh, we've got an image for just a background, so uh, just so like the white text is readable, in, uh, just in case we go through a particularly white environment, I guess something something political joke something and then we've got the name of the player which again using i think it's called oh, i can't remember it i used it for loud or quiet uh basically just a wrapper for steam's uh native methods for when you're using a game yeah uh, you could like just grab the uh, username of the uh pl the pl person playing the game and shove it into there to display it and then we have a starting width which is just set in the script and finally we've got a float for our maximum health uh, let's go into how this was coded now. So, as I can say, we've got all the same variables there. And on start, basically what we do is we just find an object of, well, we find an instance of the player health, because there's only one at the moment. Uh, you could, uh, for basically when we're going to have more players, we'll probably have a more specific way of uh, setting it up, so say, for each of the players, we'd create one of these person UIs uh, at runtime and just use that to display it. But for now, we're just going to have this one fixed, uh, this one that just stays there and just finds the only instance of player health in the game. And then we have to get the starting width of the health bar, which so we know how big the player to be, uh, the bar should be as a percentage of the player's health. So in this case, we just use health bar dot rect transform dot rect dot width. Oh, yeah. And um, this is kind of simple, but uh, so that'll get the width in pixels, sorry, uh, which is uh, 100 pixels at the moment. It's kind of annoying how you have to go through rec transform to, and then two recs to get it, to get just to get the width. I'm not sure why that has to be done, but it does, I guess. So yeah. All right, and as for setting the actual size of the bar, it's fairly simple. So we just use health bar dot rec transform dot set size with current anchors. And we use the rep axis horizontal because we're changing the width of the uh, the image. And um, finally, we multiply the starting width by the this to display uh, the person we're displaying's health divided by the max health. So this basically gives us a, I think it's a value. It'll be a value between zero and one, which 
basically means one means you've got all your health and zero means you've got no health. And since we're multiplying the starting width by that, it will gather us a value between zero pixels and 100 pixels equivalent to that health bar. And that is what gives us, like, yeah, that allows us to draw it rather than just having a number. And finally, for the actual text box, we just set name.text equal to name of player. It's just a string, you can shove anything in there. And yeah. Uh, next up is the item UI. Okay, so for the item UI, uh, it's a little different in that it'll just go on the player instance rather than the, in the actual canvas. It sort of doesn't make sense, but whatever. Uh, Basically, it's because it only needs to be specific to one player, and it's not going to be displayed on every uh, player's screen. It's just going to be displayed on the one at the side. So basically, this contains information on your current weapons, your ammo, and your, any items you've picked up. So in this case, I'll just open that up. Uh, so we've got the main weapon. So we've got an image to display like an icon for it, and then a text box. Uh, sorry, a text box to indicate like the current ammo level. And again, we've got a similar thing for the secondary weapon. So I've got an image and a text box. And finally, we've just got images for the bomb, pills, and first aid you may have. <clears throat> and then we've just got like a couple of sprites for first aids and pills. And the weapon images, or weapon sprites, are kept with the actual weapons so we can grab them and switch them out on the fly if you change weapons and whatnot. So first thing that you do is in start you get the uh, player scripts that we'll need to know what to actually draw. So we get the my health or the player health under my health, the player's weapon controller under my weapon controller and my uh, the player input script under my input and we do that there. Uh, next, we set all the values. So if uh, the weapon controller dot current weapon is null, so if the player hasn't picked up a primary weapon yet because they don't spawn with one, uh, we just set the sprite to be null and the text to be blank. Otherwise, so if there is a primary weapon, we set the primary sprite to be my weapon controller dot current weapon dot item sprite, which again is just the uh, new variable here we've added and we assigned in the inspector. And for ammo main dot text, so saying the ammo level, we just do my weapon controller dot current weapon dot current magazine, a uh, little divisor or slash, and then my weapon controller dot current weapon dot current ammo. And likewise, we do secondary dot sprite, and we say my weapon controller dot pistol dot item sprite, and ammo in pistol is equal to the just the current magazine of the pistol because pistols in Left 4 Dead have infinite ammo, so that's why we do that. So, and the other ones are a bit simpler. So, if my health dot has first aid is true, then we just set it to be the first aid sprite icon. Otherwise, if we don't have a first aid kit, we set it to no first aid, which is just a blank sprite. And we do the same for the pain pills, and once we have the uh, like throwables implemented, we'll do that as well. And here we have. Uh, we have basically, uh, remember in uh, the player input script where we scrolled and it would change this number that would then determine what item was being held in the player's hands at any given time? Uh, well, we're using that again to sort of like indicate which item visually as well. So in this case, we set the color of the item in hand to be, of, of the item in hand's icon to be red, whereas the others just stay white. So in this case, if uh, the number is zero, we set the secondary to red and the rest to white. And if it's one, we set the primary weapon to red and the rest to white. And if it's two, we set the boost to red. If it's three, we set the first aid to red. And if it's four, we set the bomb to red. So yeah, you get the idea of that. It's pretty simple. And finally, we will be doing the progress bar script. Okay, so this will be the... Uh, this is the progress bar. So when you like, um, when we were using the health kit, you know, had the progress bar that slowly expanded to show how much time was left. And that's basically that. It's pretty simple. It uses the same like idea as the health kit. So first off, we've got a static progress bar me. Uh, 
the reason we have just like one static instance of the progress bar is that you could use it for multiple things. So say in Left 4 Dead, you use the progress bar for like when you're using the first aid kit or a defibrillator. Uh, and sometimes in levels where you like leave and open a door or a sewer manhole or something like that, they'd also use a similar progress bar. So by having it sort of a, sort of be generic, so like we can pass in a message and uh, just have different numbers to indicate how long different actions might take. Uh, we can use this more than once. See, code reusability. You're not that fucked over if you use my tutorials. Although you probably shouldn't have public things all, all over the place. It just makes it easier to assign in the inspector. But yeah, uh, I digress. Next up, we have uh, two images. One is for the actual bar that displays progress, and one is just for a semi-transparent black rect that just makes it easier to see. And we've also got a text box for the message to be displayed. So whether you're using the first aid kit, opening the door, you know, whatever. And then finally, we've got a Boolean for whether we should display the GUI or not, and whether we called it the whether we called the GUI the last frame. So again, on awake, we set me equals to this for our singleton, and we set the bar's max width to be whatever the current width of the bar is. By using bar dot rec transform dot rec dot width, we can get rid of the start method. And first off, on update, we call this disable UI uh, script. This basically just checks display and enables and disables our GUI components based on whether it's disabled or not, displaying or not. So that's that. And then we have it check the boolean called last frame. So if that's false, then we set display to false, and otherwise. We set called last frame to false. Uh, the reason for this is that in our set bar progress, we are setting called last frame to true and display to true at once. So once, uh, if we set it to false here, it gets reset to uh, true on the next call of set bar progress. So it keeps getting like set false and true, but it will stop. Uh, this bit of code executing where if called last frame is false, then display is false. But at the same time, once we stop calling set bar progress from like the player health script when we're using the first aid kit, it will then stop resetting called last frame to true. So called last frame will be false, and then that'll get executed, and then it'll set display to false. So it'll basically automatically uh, disable the GUI once the action is done without you having to do anything else, which is pretty cool. I thought, but yeah, okay. So set bar progress. Uh, this is basically what we call when we want to display a progress bar. You could only do it once at a time if you want, because uh, we only got a single one. So yeah, um, I'm just getting Facebook messages. Let me mute that. You fuck off. Mute. There we go. So we've got a string to describe the action that you're doing a float of how long the action should take overall, and a float for the current progress of the uh, action, basically. Uh, so we set message.text to action, uh, like we did with the person UI for the health bar. We set the rec transform dot size of current actors. Uh, we use rec, rec transform to access to horizontal, because we're setting the width of the bar. Uh, and we're setting it to bar max width multiplied by the current progress divided by how long it will take. And then we set called last frame and display to true again. And yeah, and we also had to make some changes to the player health script. Just minor ones, uh, where is it? So, so basically on our heal up script, heal up method in the player health script, we are calling progress bar dot me dot set bar progress Got set passing in using first aid. Uh, sorry, uh, then we're passing in uh, 4.0 because the using of the first aid takes four seconds. And finally, for our like current progress value, we're setting it's sending in four minus heal up timer. Uh, I know we should probably have a, a heart, uh, like a proper variable for how long the actual action should take, but it's not too important right now, so I'll just leave it. And we have an identical thing for the pain pills, except, you know, it uses the pain pills. 
instead of passes in using pain pills instead of using first aid. Sorry, it's hot today and I'm not thinking straight. But yeah, I think that's everything. Uh, yeah, so I'll just give you a quick demo again. Bit of a quick episode this week because it's eight in the evening and I left this all to the last minute because I've been busy writing a proposal for a publisher which is all very adult and scary and will probably lead to objection and I'll spend the summer drinking my sorrows away. But yeah, but it's an interesting thing to do, having to describe a game in three pages or less and ask for a lot of money. Yeah, but as you can see, we've got our GY, so we've got an uh, indicator for what gun you've got out, pistol. Uh, we've got the health kit, so we'll press right click and it'll use the first aid and bring up all the GY and shit for it. And I think Accidentally let go, yep, yeah. and we can do the same for pills. Yeah, and uh, finally we can change the health bar length, so we can set one, two, three, four, five, and you get the idea. Yeah. So that was our little foray into GUI. I uh, hope you enjoyed and found something useful from it. Uh cheers for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, etc. And apparently it's the new thing to say you've got to press that fucking bell icon to get updated or some shit. So do that. Yeah, bye.